Loveline, coast to coast. It, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. What's up there? What were you doing? Something on the phone or something? I was asleep. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did Anderson just wake you up when he told you 30 seconds? No, no, no. I went to get. I woke up when he said two minutes, went and got coffee, and then he said 30 seconds. I see. You look good. Okay. Well, what time did you get here? About 15 minutes ago. 12 yeah. minutes ago. Took a little nap? Yeah. Pow. I mean, I was tired. I walked in here. Nothing wrong with that. No, it's good. Yeah. They say you're impressed. Good. My, my esteem somehow has gone up in your eyes now. You're scoring you're, points. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. You keep you got, that napping got, going, brother. Gas trouble tonight. I took a nap, but you're, I'm really, I'm really way up your scale. Drew announced he was a little gassy when he came in tonight, yeah. which could be bad times for me because uh, I got nothing. Yeah, well, I'm going through a real down period rectally. Sorry, I apologize. It can be pretty yeah. depressing sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, it's got me down, but you know, I keep my head up. I know there's another fart just around the corner. As my wife reminded me, though, that's not a turn on. The gas? No. <sighs> it's a, yeah. one of God's great, great jokes. Yeah, you're with the wrong woman. No, that's no, all. no. That's all. Brad, we'll see what we can do about that. Brad? Yeah. You're 19? Yeah. What's up? Uh, not much. I just had some questions. Uh, me and my girlfriend, you know, we've been together for a few weeks, and uh, we just recently started having sex. And uh, it's kind of weird because her ex-boyfriend, she tells me, you know, uh, they'd have sex probably for like three, four minutes at tops, I guess. Good. Yeah, he was one of those uh, I don't know, efficient super, super guys. Efficient or guys, yeah. Yeah. You know, he'd, he'd get off after two minutes of sex. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she was, you know, like, what's going on here? Anyway. You're double his time, right? Oh, Jesus. Like, it takes me... Sometimes I won't even get off. And Ooh. it takes me probably like 30, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you on a medication? Uh, yeah, actually, I am. I take depression medication. W and, which one? Uh, Paxil. Well, that's what's doing it. Yeah, I, I know I know that's what's doing it. It's the sexual side effects. Yeah. But um, I, and I, I really don't have a problem with, you know, me not getting off. Because sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. And it's not a big deal to me. Uh oh but for her, I don't know what, what the problem is, but, like, uh, you know, we'll have sex probably for about five, ten minutes, and she'll she'll start to get really dry. That's normal, Brad. About ten minutes is about all most women can take. Well, that's a little early, but all right. How yeah, old is she? Uh, she's 17. She'll be 18 in a few months. But, uh, see, the, the reason I had questions was So she is going to be 18 at some point, you're saying? Hmm. Yeah. Good, good. And uh, my ex-girlfriend before this... Yeah. You know, we we could go for a long time, yeah. and yeah. she would never get dry okay. or anything. Okay, hold on, hold on. Here's what people have to realize, and here's what happens to guys and to girls. They hook up with someone in high school, and they're with them for three years. That becomes the one and only vagina or penis they've ever seen. They're all like that. And they're all like that way. Yeah. And then for the rest of their life, they're confused. Yeah. You know, it's like... It was one girlfriend, she was, man, she was wet. I mean, she was like a, rash, had to wring her like a bar rag. I mean, it was, water was coming all over. There was fluid down there, and we could go, and she loved it in this position, and she never complained about, and then you get with somebody else, and it's a totally different thing. Yeah. Women vary quite a bit downstairs. Quite a bit. And ladies, men do too. A little Not bit. so much in anatomy, but in time. Mm -hmm. You got the one boyfriend that goes in two minutes. The next guy over here is, if he goes at all, it's in an hour. Mm -hmm. Do not be confused by it. Expect it. Right? I think guys are more confused than the men, than the women, rather. Yeah, but now as you get older and you've been with a few different women, you just sort of realize, or a few different men, hey, this is how it works. I mean, as a woman. Not as a gay guy. Come on. You were... You were Hey, I slipped up. I, but I was just wondering if you were actually dressed as a woman, you, you were with a guy as a woman. That's no. Like, no. Okay. okay. So, he should get on some what? Wellbutrin or something? Well, that's an interesting idea, is to either change the Paxil to Wellbutrin, Remeron, or Sarazone, or just add Wellbutrin to the Paxil, and he may shorten his time a little bit. All right. And and have, as far as she goes, libido. maybe get some lube going, work it out. You just started. But for half an hour for a lot of women, for a lot of women, and I dare say most, you can paint. It's out. That's yeah, out but time. she's drying five minutes. He said five ten. Got to get a little lube going in there. That's all. Jessica. Uh, hi. Hey, you're forty. Forty eight. Forty eight. What's up? I'm an old person. Yeah, 
Uh, remind me, by the way, please, one more time, Duro, if I forget, to kick the guy in the nuts who decided it was a good idea to put the slash through the zero yeah. on the font. The computer, yeah. Yeah, because from anything, if you don't have a jeweler's loop and your goddamn face isn't pressed against it, it looks like an eight. Thank you. Go ahead. All right, baby. In anything you just said. Well, you're not gonna. It's gonna be a long night for you. What's your question? No, I don't think so. Um, well, this is a question for Dr. Drill. Now, I know, I know you, Adam, will get a bigger kick out of it, but um, okay, I've been married uh, 25 years, hmm. mm -hmm. but I've been with my husband since we're 15. Wow! Oh my God! That's gotta be I some know. kind of record. It's a love line. Well, record. well, he went in the Navy, so we each had like you know a little reprieve, you know, for three years, four years. She went out of terror during those years, but you know, know to experiment. But he, oh, sure, but yeah. Basically, we've been monogamous since um, 1976, bicentennial mm -hmm. year. Anyway, um, in the past, like the past year, I know this is going to sound really odd, but like because we have a pretty active sex life, and. Um, like, you know, like you have sex in the night and then in the morning when you go in the, you know, you go in the bathroom or whatever, it like smells like really, really bad. The next <laughs> morning. <laughs> yeah. The next morning? No, well, in the morning, you know, like if you... Well, listen, night, screwball, I'm saying if you... take a shower during the night. No, you wouldn't. You, the water doesn't run after the streetlights are on, does it, Drew? But if you go... I don't have street lights where I live, but anyway. If you were to check yourself out Thanks, in nighttime, genius. would it smell also? No. So only in the next day is it smelling? No, it's it's there. All right, hold on, hold on. This <laughs> reactment. God, oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's a the, love line reenactment. Go ahead. Here we go. So the night, uh, if you were to check yourself out the night after sex, it would smell. No. So the next morning is the only time you know. No. Okay. <laughs> Do you see what we, why we hate people? <laughs> Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. You know, you you, list, you take all these retarded calls from all these teenagers, you know, their they're, they're questions are like so retarded. Right. Serious question. It's I always want funny when people say retarded. <laughs> all right, here's what we're trying to figure out. First of all, I'm worried about your lung disease. My God. I don't have lung disease. You do a lot of smoking? Cigarettes. I smoke, but... Uh, listen, I, I, I can like hear it. your, I can a, hear your a emphysema. Wild, a wild stab in the dark. I can hear your emphysema from here. You can hear my what? Emphysema from here. I don't have emphysema. Go, go see a doctor. I can take a deep breath. <gasps> well, now I'm sold. Hey, listen, I, I was listening to Star Jones today on, on the TV, on mm -hmm. The View, and she sounds like she has emphysema. Yeah. Why don't you switch over to Mars Venus? It's a much better show. We're not saying that other people don't have emphysema. You understand? We're saying maybe you do as well. Anyway, so let's get to the bottom of our question. Now, <laughs> yeah, one that woman in America question. has emphasis. I'm going to ask the question again. If I you, was trying to be serious. Jessica, listen. If yeah. you smell things the night of the event, of the sex, there's no smell. That yeah, night? I, I, is, I thought maybe like one of Listen to me. Listen to me. You're make, hey, Jessica. Jessica. <laughs> we're going to hang up on you if you don't listen. Okay? okay? The evening you have sex, if you were to smell, there would be no smell. Is that correct? The evening we're going to have sex. If you have sex in the evening and you look around for a smell, you don't find any. Is that accurate? Yes. But the next morning, if you haven't cleaned up during the night, there's a smell. Yes. Where is the smell? It's coming out of the vagina, is right? It out, out of the, the vagina? The toilet paper. <laughs> the toilet paper. So if you wipe yourself... So it le leaks out of you eight hours later? Not eight hours. Probably like four hours later, three hours later. Come on. All right. Hey, Jessica. Jessica, yes. we're going to hang up on you now because we're having difficulty with you. you. You say you have sex in the night and the next morning... When you wake up. ...comes out of you when you're in the bathroom, yes? yes. After a night's sleep. Yeah. On average, that'll be seven or eight hours. All right, but you only sleep three or four hours. Now we understand that. Okay. So, so something happens to the sperm that's inside of you. You're right. During those three or four hours. Right. So if there's sperm already out on the bed clothes, that kind of thing, that doesn't smell. If you gave your husband a BJ, it wouldn't smell when you did that, would it? No, but I wouldn't go to completion. Uh, we're not. Hey, we're okay. not. Hey, no. All right. All right. <laughs> Listen, I, I, hey, all right. I don't got enough time. I just wonder how people get through life. I really do. Do you know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. 
uh, where's the car keys? Where's the car? Like, what about the process? Yeah, where's the car? You just to think about it. What are you trying? Hey, what, what do you mean? I mean, what about the process of just say dropping your car off, getting it repaired, and picking it up? Something like that. Phone calls, scheduling, payment. Impossible. I don't know. I think they, they people seem to be able to function, though, don't they? This Mer- one. Mara's talking about how insane David Arquette was. Yeah, but he's not hostile. He doesn't. He doesn't think. It, when you ask him a question, he doesn't think around it and then refuse to answer it. Oh, well, you may be right, Diane. Yes. You're 23. Hi. What's up? Well, I'm 23. I've been with my boyfriend for three and a half years. I totally love him to death, and um, I don't want to have sex anymore. We used to have sex. Mm-hmm. first year but the last you know year and a half you don't want to or he doesn't want to I don't want to he wants to. why don't you want to in, I, in your estimation I have no idea is I'm this your so first boyfriend no this is your first second first one you've really been in love with second <laughs> how'd this first one end um we were just you know young we went away to college okay and you've always enjoyed sex with this guy up until recently about a year and a half ago Oh, yeah, a year and a half. Well, it's been a while. But it was okay yeah. for during that first year and a half. Oh, yeah. How's how's his attitude with the whole thing? You know, I have to... He's really patient with me, but he's a little stressed out about it. He's being... You know, he's a guy. How often do you have sex? Um, Once, twice a month. Mm-hmm. Mm. And he's not going for that. Well, he's going along with it, but he can't be happy about and it. You, even that you don't want to do, is that right? Right. It's a chore. You give him some oral sex ever? No, no. I no. hate that. You should be jailed. I know. How dare you? I know. But I used to be sexual. I just, I don't know yeah. what happened to me. Are you, are you depressed? Um, I've, you know, been a little depressed like the past two years, but, you know, I can't blame it on that anymore. Yeah, been the last year and a half been depressed, but it couldn't be that. No. Now, um, are you on any no. medication? No, I'm not. You started nothing a year and a half ago? Vitamins, birth control pills? Birth control, but I've been off the birth control for three months, and it's, I'm still not sexual. Nothing. All right. Well, maybe it's the the depression. But, you know, it, it was something in my life that happened two years ago. I should be over it. What happened? Oh, hold on. We'll just keep guessing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. My, my parents split up. Mm, you were 21? 20, yeah. So, I mean, I should be... It, yeah. it shouldn't be affecting me that much. No, maybe not. If you're angry about that, that can be... Nah, it's nothing. I, I, you, you got two choices here. Either you're depressed and it's just slowing you down, or you're not into this guy it's anymore. It's a relationship. Either you, he's not... You may be growing out of it. You need to sabotage it for some reason. Sometimes your body tells you things that your mind doesn't accept. Yeah. Or isn't willing to admit. Maybe you ain't so into this guy anymore. Oh, I love him to death. He's, he's perfect. Yeah. You know, we're, some, we're great together. Yeah, I love uh, I love my nephews. No, I'm I'm in love with him. No, I mean I really love him. I like to have sex with him. You missed my point. <laughs> okay, well, listen. Get look into the depression, and if you look into that and you start getting that treated, and you still ain't into this guy, you ain't into it. Right. Yeah. It's, it means a lot. It says a lot about how you feel. Oh yeah, especially it, women. A guy could be, hate the woman and still be wanting to have sex. Oh, yeah. Yeah. More. Yeah, more. You get that vengeance F in. That's the best one. Yeah, that's right, baby. Yeah, you're not so smart anymore, are you? You ever do that one? No. Oh. Yeah, me neither. Mark? Hello? You're 21. Yeah, I'm from Long Beach. That's good. What's up? Nothing much. I just need a little bit of advice. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. I've been with my girlfriend for about three years, mm-hmm. and I'm starting to have, like, feelings for guys and, like, checking them out. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm curious, you know? You're 21. Right. A little late to be kind of curious, isn't it? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Were you curious prior to that? Like, I didn't know it, but, like, I would, like, I have, like, features, like, that I would, like, at school and stuff, like, a long time ago. I, like, had all girlfriends and, like, everything, like, pieced up just, like, right now. And, like, I'm just starting to realize stuff. And do you have anything in your life that might have led to your confusion? Were you sexually abused or anything like that? Well, uh, my dad wasn't around for a long time. Mm. Oh, nah. Man, it won't do it for guys. So maybe you were thinking about guys and you didn't know it five years ago? Right, or possibly. Weren't willing to admit it? Right. That's, that's true. Because, like, 
it's kind of like a homophobic world, you know? Yeah. So, so you were having those feelings, you just didn't want to really deal with them. Right. Okay. And so um, I've been with her for like three years. So you're not confused. You're just waking up. You're willing now to come forward a little bit. Yeah, and I don't know like what to do because we've been together for like, you know, three years and like I'm starting to love this girl and I don't know. All right, well, whatever you do, don't go further. Do not marry her. You've got the ultimate out. Yep. I'm gay. I'm out. She, she'll get that. Yeah. Well, like... And the more time you let her waste, uh, you know... Yeah. Well, she probably I, will think you, she turned you gay. Well, should I start experimenting? or I don't know, like, what to do, like, with the whole situation. Right. You need to break up with her. You need to start working your way out of this thing. Right on. All right. And, and that's, and that's go the ahead, deal. And then go ahead and boyfriends. That's fine. Yeah. You're 21, for God's sakes. Well, but take it slow. Start with half a penis. See how that works. Mm. That works. You move up the three corner dong. No, three quarter dong. No, which which half? No, no. I don't mean half. You know, split down the middle long ways. Mm. I mean half. You know, like a you know taking a loaf of bread and breaking it in half, like yeah, a but baguette. Which half? Oh, oh, oh. It's good. Uh, Southern. Okay. Half closest to the balls. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I do. I start with the uh, half close to the balls, and then. Eventually, you know, when I think I'm up to it, I work down to the other, the outer half. Do you have to have a guy that has the the front half removed? Uh, Drew, I don't look at guys as whole penis or half penis. I look at them as individuals. I Everyone see. is okay. different. How okay. dare you? Please. Plus, there's personality. Okay. Stacy. Yeah. You're 36. Yes. What's up? I have a couple problems. The first one will address hopefully. <laughs> I'm having problems with intimacy with men, and I'm thinking that it's due to something that I caught my last husband doing. Which was? His self. And I mean, not normal masturbation. He was giving himself oral. He was giving himself head. Nice. So, and, and yeah. now I'm what, having uh, to... Huh? You, what position was he in when he did that? Was he on his back with his legs kicked no, over? No, he just bent right over and got after it. I mean, like, he can flip backwards and do it. If you want, I can prove it. I've got it on videotape. There was... Oh. We had a big battle between I'd us. be very interested in seeing that. Wow. Very well, interested. I'm not kidding, because, you know what? I mean, I felt I really betrayed, because he didn't have to mess with my head like that. Was he... he to... Well, hold on a second, Stacey. Was he... Sitting down, or was he standing yeah, up? On a, on a big plastic dildo <sighs> and bouncing on it as he's like giving himself head. Oh, oh my god, that thickens the plot a little. Is he, oh, wait, is he no, very, very oh limp? My god. <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was really heavily into dope and stuff, and people dope. like to use that as like a cop the... out. They like to use it as a cop out that they did this because they were on dope or alcohol or whatever, you mm -hmm. know. Oh, Stacy's got some energy. Oh boy. yeah. Oh boy. Well, I'm upset because I, I mean, I, I don't want to go out really. I mean, I'm happy being by myself. Well, yeah. You hate men. Yeah. You hate yeah. men. So. Well, hold on. Because that, that's what my next issue was. I have a 13 year old son. I'm having trouble with. Yeah, yes. oh, boy. Surprise, surprise. Well, yeah. Okay, hold on, Stacy. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta reenact it. Okay. Reenact this for just a second. Did you come into the room, or did you come home early, or how did you catch him? I came him? into the room. You came into the room. And yeah. you pulled out a video camera and started filming? No, 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 no. This was like um, several months on down the line, you know, because he wouldn't just leave me alone. He would come to my house and harass me and this and that, so I got to a point where I felt like I had to do something to fight back, right? Sure. And, and so I figured if I made the tape, I could threaten to show it to his family or friends uh -huh. or whatever and keep Man. him away from me. How'd you, how'd you make the tape, though? I hid the camera. I was fixing to move, and I had a bunch of boxes in my room. Mm -hmm. And I hid it in a box. And then he box. came in there and blew himself? Well, well, I had to set the stage, you know? Yeah. But... Yeah. You leave a trail of breadcrumbs over to the dildo, get him started? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I got him a sack of drugs, okay? <laughs> uh, I see. And and so when he say he was bouncing up and down on the dildo and blowing himself, which uh, I respect in, in many ways. I mean, that's that's a fairly yeah. tall order. Yeah. Um, where? How was the dildo attached to whatever it was attached it, to? It wasn't. He just... He, he just put it up in there and was yeah. pressing it against the chair? It's, it's amazing. It, yeah, or, or in the case of the movie, the mattress, right. I see. 
All right, so well, this guy's got some severe problems. Yeah, yes, what's, what's bizarre about this? And you decided to marry this no, guy. No, right? I didn't know all this. It was like a complete... You decided to marry this guy, though. No, not knowing this. Yeah, it doesn't not matter. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah. I would have known this guy was a weirdo uh, if he drove past... Uh, if he was going past me the other direction on the 405 at 70 and I was going 90 the other direction. I don't know. A lot of people that I let allowed to view it, right? They were pretty surprised. That's uh, that's your worst nightmare, by the way. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah, let's put it to the court of public opinion. Uh. No, I know that. But that who did you show? Who did you show this tape to? Um. Oh boy, a bunch of his friends. They made its way into his parents' VCR. Oh. You know. <laughs> what did he do? His parents are drug addicts too, though, right? Um. Well, no, alcoholics. They're, they're alcoholics. They're, they're frauding Social Security. They make much money. <laughs> how uh, How did it make its way into his parents' VCR? His, his uncle did it. Oh his uncle took it in there for God. me. You know, we haven't talked about this in a while, Drew, but I'd like to call an airstrike in. Oh, yeah. And parents are uh, committing uh, fraud. welfare fraud. This guy's got a uh, dildo up his ass. Uh, the uncle's uh, ranting him out. Well, uh, I Stace think there's a little a more skeletons in the closet than that, and maybe, you know, with his family. What does he do for a living? He might be interbred or something. What does he do for a living? He works with kids. He, he, he doesn't. <laughs> I see. What does he Not do? Not anymore. He what? has to refinish furniture and um, do maintenance on um, rentals and stuff. Oh, I see. Not anymore. Yeah. All right. So, Stacy, is this guy out of your life now? Oh, yes. He has been. Yeah, for... but Stacy. Good. Well, wait a minute. You got your 13-year-old? Yes. Oh, no, that's not from that relationship. Oh. That's from a previous marriage. Oh, shocking. And I, I've been a single parent my kid's whole life. His dad's in the Navy and delinquent on court-ordered child support. Oh, he probably got in the Navy because he was married to Stacy. Uh, okay. No more No more kids, though, right? No. No, 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 no. Just one. Okay. Right, Stacy, this, this, these are all stories of addiction. That's the story here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you, too, probably are an addict, I suspect. Recovering. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know how much recovery you've got in you if you're, if you're hanging out with this kind of chaos. No, I'm not, I, no, I moved on with my life. I got to move away from the town that I was stuck in. Well, yeah. you, how long have you been with your current sponsor? My what? That's what I mean. <laughs> True. Always pops them on that one. I'm by myself. I have been for... I said, how long have you been with your current sponsor? What do you mean, my current sponsor? See, that, that's not recovery, Stacey. You're not anywhere near recovery unless you have a long-standing relationship with a sponsor with whom you're working the steps on a daily basis. Right. You've got a long, long way to go. All right. For the, for the sake of your child, please get involved with that. Don't worry about men right now. Worry about your 13-year-old and him not coming out anything like any guy you've ever been with. 85% of addicts, alcoholics, are sex addicts, and they do weird-ass stuff when they're doing heavier drugs. That's yeah. You got, how else do you get stimulated when you're high on heroin? Ass, nothing, nothing else stimulates Ass is the operative word there, Drew. Weird-ass stuff. Yeah. She's calling from Bakersfield, and i got to tell you, uh, don't get me wrong about Bakersfield, but uh, I don't even know if I've been there, but I swear that place got to be some kind of hellhole. Some kind of god awful pit, maybe uh, maybe as bad as Sunland, <laughs> where you lived. <laughs> because uh, I've only heard of uh, freaks and weirdos in that entire place. All right. Oh yeah, corn's from Bakersfield. Ooh, corn is from Bakersfield. Uh, like you said, there you go. We like them. That's right. But they were smart enough to get out. We're going to take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll speak to Sean. Sean had unprotected sex with girlfriend. Didn't come. Wants to know about the morning after pill. After this. Hello? Is this Love Line? Call 1-800-LOVE-199. Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah! Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. It's uh, sweetness over there, Dr. Drew, everybody. Sweetness, wow. Yeah. Just got done uh, explaining to me when I was talking about what a dump the valley was. Uh, he grew up in the uh, hoity-toity Pasadena area, so he didn't want to go over there and get his shoes dirty. That's why, he, that's why he didn't know about the valley, where the uh, real people are from. Salt of the earth. Sean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Similar to that caller we had yeah. before the end of the second. Right. Yes. My kind of gal. You're 17. What's up? Um, a couple nights ago, me and my girlfriend decided to have sex, and we did it with a condom, and it wasn't really working. What does that mean? Like, I didn't really feel anything. Like, it, like, didn't give me any sensation at all. Right. And so, like, she may, she brought it up. She said, you can just do it and pull out. And I said no at first. But I wanted to see if it would feel better. 
so I just did it, but I didn't let myself even come close to coming at all. Mm-hmm. That must have been a nice, distracting experience for you. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, I was wondering, what are the risks of, like, the pre com and that? Oh, like that? oh, idiot. Idiot. To use the S word on right. the air. There is risk. I would suggest the morning after pill. Suppresses ovulation. Use it within 72 hours of that, that kind of an experience. Make sure you don't get pregnant. 70% effective. And, yeah, don't do that again. And you, I don't know. It, I was going to ask him if he was a dribbler or not, but I'm scared to talk to him now. Tim? Yeah. You're 23. What's up? Guys, hey, how you doing? Good, what's up? Um, not much. Hey, I just had a question. Um, I'm thinking about going to Africa with the, joining the Peace Corps and fighting the AIDS campaign with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering what the chances of me being able to contract AIDS just from everyday life. Ah, you're not going to get it. You're probably get a burning tire put around <laughs> you, but you won't get AIDS. I mean, there's... Well, how would you get it from... Um, well, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, I've heard statistics, you know, where it's like one in nine people, you know, in some of the places where I'd be going. Yeah, from... They have sex with each other. Yeah, I mean, there's no way you could get it from any kind of foods or anything. I mean, no. Oh man, if you're thinking like that, you shouldn't be going. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just something that you know. I, you know, it's just something I wanted to have some kind of you know closure on. I wanted to know. Believe me, sure. they'll have you well prepped before yeah. you. You uh, must be into these chicks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You I like kinda. this one chick, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's going over. That's there. why he's going. I yeah, see. Yeah. That too. Yeah. He don't give a rant's ass about the Africans. <laughs> he wants to get some tail. <laughs> I no. Think. No. No. It's a little more than that, but uh, a little more, but. Not much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she, she brought up the idea. I can say that much. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. yeah so. I can see him over there <laughs> in a Biafra somewhere, and it's like, uh, yeah, this first village you're going to help uh, Tim? He's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, sure. Hey, I'll be up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. You want me to slap him, or what, oh, do, yeah, what do we okay, need? Sure. Here, you know, just give there him you go. Yeah, what, Here's what, what, an what, IV what, or something. Here's some water. What, what is exactly you're going to participate in over there? Well, um, I guess there's going to be a little bit of everything. I have a lot of contracting skills, so I guess we're going to be like helping build a hospital and do some other stuff like that. So For the Peace Corps? Yeah, yeah. Well, good times. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so you're not going to be working directly even with AIDS patients. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, you know, it's been a few years since high school, so in the health class, so I didn't really understand. Uh, you know, I mean, I, right. I know from cooked foods, like right. somebody could cook some meat or something. No, something. you have right. sex with these. Listen, you have sex. You share a needle. You get AIDS. Okay, That's let's. Uh, all right, but uh, you you can get other things. So it's good. <laughs> yeah, to be careful believe me, I'm going to Africa. Do you have any other thousands of tropical diseases? Oh, you can get? Yeah. I mean, please. All right. <laughs> I can't Hey, okay. Tim. Yeah. So, let me try to figure out this chick. How long have you known her? Um, oh, how long have I Two known years. her? Two years. Yeah, years and years. Years, years, years and years. And yeah, you, like eight years. Oh. You, how long have you dug her for? Um, uh, just about just about a year. No, no, no. Not how long have you been dating her? How long have you been... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah but, but how long have you been into her? Oh, into her? Uh, years and years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a she, friend, friend's older, older sister, so... Yeah. She just finally came around a year ago? No, we just kind of finally uh, were in the same place at the same time for a while, you she, know. She and, caved uh, in. She caved. He came after her, after her, after her. Click, you know. Yeah, so you guys boyfriend and girlfriend now? Yeah, yeah. And see, she's trying to go to Africa. Why is she going to Africa? I do. Um, it's just been her dream for years and years. I see. Does she want you to go? Yeah. You huh? sure? Yeah and, yeah, and I haven't really been able to give her a solid yes or no. until. Well, how did she bring it up to you? Um, just, uh, it's something I've known about for a while, but, uh, it's, it's just... Yeah, but not. when did she bring up the idea of you going with her? I'm um, going to Africa, Ian. Let me see, earlier this, su- or, early in the winter. And when she brought it up, how did she bring it up? Well, that she just, uh, wants me to go with her. All right. So. Fair enough. You guys are doing the Lord's work over there, Tim. Yeah, yeah. And how long are you, you going to be there for? <laughs> Two years. All right, good yeah. times. Yeah. It'll be wild for you. I'm yeah, sure it'll I, I, I only feel it. like 23 months. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know, I'm sure. Hey, you guys cracked me up, man. All right, thanks. I appreciate the help. All right, have fun over there. Yeah, you take care. All right, take care of those people Portland over there. Portland will be offering. It'll be wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Portland and Africa. Very similar climate. Especially southern people, Africa. Uh, oh, yeah, everything's very similar. We don't know. Culture, terrain. He's a contractor. I mean, it's the <laughs> same, same, same supply. His specialty is probably in waterproofing. <laughs> <laughs> Do I get that just for a laugh? Uh, no, he won't have a special. He's not a real contractor. I mean, he did a little work. He don't know anything. <laughs> you want to see if he knows something? Yeah. yeah. All right. Tim? Oh, Tim hung up. Right. Oh, there oh, he is. Oh, there he is. Hold wait, on, wait. on, Tim? 
yeah, yeah. You there? You know about contracting? Yeah, yeah. What's your specialty? Um, probably plumbing. Interesting. A L- little bit of plumbing. Uh, I've done just about everything. Plumbing and framing. Uh, mm-hmm. Go ahead, Adam. Yeah. Yeah? Do you want me to give you a little test on framing? Uh, uh, sure, sure. Okay. You'll probably win, but hit it up. Well, I'm just, I'm, it's not a competition. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Studs are spread out. How how often? Um, see, so you got me there. Oh. Ooh, what? That's the basic <laughs> I'll give, give you multiple choice. 14 on center, 16 on center, or 24 on center? Uh, I'll, put, I'll choose 16 on center. All right. Good. Good even, enough. Even I knew that see, one. See, um, I'm, I'm usually the person, hey, do this, and I'll, okay, and I'll do it. Wow. Does your, your dad own a firm or something? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's nope. not usually called a contractor. That's right. called a laborer. <laughs> oh, you're that guy. Oh, you're the laborer. Yeah. Oh, you don't say do this. They tell you to do this. Yeah, yeah. All right, Tim. Now, they, they, they got a real shortage of manpower over there. <laughs> that's what I heard. I heard they need any help that they can get. Yeah, well, that's what they're going for. All right. Yeah. Get down, Timmy, my boy. How can somebody like that call himself a contractor? What if you what if you hired somebody like that and said, hey, I'm a contractor? No, he, he's saying he's a willing guy. He's got a strong back, and he, he doesn't I'm, mind digging. He and, said, I'm a contractor. It was his opening well, he said, No, he said he had some contracting skills. He couldn't figure out how to put the studs on a frame. He, he, he guessed 16 on he center. Guessed, <laughs> I, <guessed. laughs> I knew it. That's true. That's but, shocking. Drew, maybe you should be going to Africa. Oh. Smart guy. Madeline? Yes. You're 19? Yes. Um, I have problems starting relationships. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I've never had a serious relationship, and I don't know if I'm too picky, if I'm justified to feel that way. What, what would make you justified? What does that mean? I mean, I don't know. I just always seem to find something wrong with them. I, mm-hmm. Well, how about the last guy? Um, well, the last time I had a quote-unquote boyfriend, I was in high school. Yeah. And I only dated him for about a month. What was wrong with him? Um, he just smothered me. Like, I n- didn't have any oh. free time. Are you meeting guys now? Um... Not kind of. I mean, I, I'll run into them at clubs or, you know. Why don't you just date a few guys, see, see if somebody kind of clicks? You good looking? I, I mean, I, I think so. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe. I don't know. I mean... No? Yeah, because the, the, one, the ones that, that are say, well, people say I am, but I don't know. She <laughs> says, I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was interesting the way you answered that. Why? Well, the uh, I think so. As if well, you've been arguing I, I with people for a long mean. time. I mean, the thing is, I I know what I want, and I don't think that I should... I don't want to date just anybody, just to have a boyfriend. What do you yeah. want? What? What do you want? I don't know, I just... <laughs> I, whoa, 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 wait. I know what I want. What do you want? I don't know. Okay, I well, know what I want. Well, she'll know it when she some... sees it, right? Well, I want to hear what it is. You should well, be able to articulate it. When I find a guy that I can actually talk to on an intellectual level... Well, you're not going to find that in a club, right? Right. Okay. So why don't you get involved in some projects, or community service, or something where you can meet people that might have similar... Yeah, go to Africa. Go to Africa. <laughs> are, you, are you in school now? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've studied abroad. I mean, I go places. I love to travel. and I. Why aren't you I, meeting guys at school? I don't know. I I just think that, I mean, if I if I go out with them, I just find a, something little that right. will drive where, me crazy. Where's your dad? Oh, my dad, I mean, he's here, and... He's just, I think it has to do with the fact that he's just engraved in me that guys have one thing on their mind. Well, he's and right. I can't seem to get past that. I just, like... Wait, how, how, did he, how, did he, how did he put this? I want to make sure my daughter gets it no. exactly yeah. right. Like okay, that. I heard you say this the other night that you wanted to engrave this in your daughter without mm-hmm. her, you know, rebelling. But my dad, he's just, he's always builds my self-esteem. He, you know, he doesn't... He just tells. He just basically tells me all the time that he, guys wait, have one thing on their mind. Uh-huh. And that's true. They do. Well, they're not all bad. I mean, true. Wait, you're, you're a very passionate, no, passionate listen, man. You don't speak for all men. They're not all bad, but no. they have. But they're more motivated by that than women are. Does, does your dad tell you you're smart and beautiful and Every he day. loves you? Every day. Oh, sorry. You, you know what? Hold on a second. <laughs> Let me talk to you you can't say it to her. Rarely, rarely find this on the show, but she's just kind of full of. I mean. Usually it's compensation that the parents withheld love and attention and so on and so forth. Dad abandoned the family or was abusive, and now there's some sort of compensation going on. She's really just built herself up into more than she actually is, and she's having a little difficulty because... Reality isn't complying with You know what she's basically doing? It's like when you sell... You have a car that you like a lot, yeah. and you think it's a great car, and you go, this car's a classic, man. This thing's a beauty. And you put it in the paper... He's like, I need $30,000, and everyone keeps coming by going, I'll give you 8500 and you go, oh, how dare you? This is an insult. But after a few times it's in the paper, it's like, uh, that's the price. 
you got to come on down. I think I think Madeline is still up there. Madeline. Yeah. Yeah, I think you feel too good about yourself. Oh, I, 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 rare, well, I rarely yeah. say that on this. There, there show. isn't. It's not so much feeling too good. It's it's that listen to reality. Do you think I'm? I have. Too, we rarely too high. Yeah, we rarely say this. No, it's not no. that. You, it's not that you're. It's not that uh, your criteria is too high for other people. It's a little high for yourself. Well, and you're insulating yourself from finding out what where you really fit in the world. Yeah, but, but that, you don't have to deal with the harsh reality of, that each of us deal with. Uh, you know where we fit. Just. Just uh, if you see a guy and you're attracted to him, you know, go on a date or What's if he asks you out, just go on some start dates and start you. moving around You'll a little bit. You'll find lots of quality people. You will. People are good. Yeah. You yeah. Will. <laughs> but just don't, don't, get, don't get such inflated ideas about what it's all going to be like. And, and don't set out with a whole laundry list or uh, a map to your heart or any of that. Just, just date. Just relate. See what happens. Yeah. And Drew, do you remember, you know what's weird? I haven't had it in a long time. Uh. And maybe it's because I have a... A TV and a radio show or something. I'm living in some kind of false reality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Oh, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, but do you remember dating girls, especially when you were twenty, twenty one, twenty two, and they were nineteen, twenty, twenty one in that age? And you remember just sort of getting a lot of them that weren't real satisfied and weren't real happy. Eh, they went on a few dates with you, but didn't seem like they're crazy about you. Oh, absolutely. Like. I haven't seen that in a while. As women get a little bit older, uh, they get humbled, or they act differently, or they figure themselves out, or something. I don't know what it is. It's a good thing, guys. You can look forward to that one day. But dating 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old girls, especially attractive ones, that's a pain in the ass. It, you'll get a lot of, uh, I don't know what happened. I was really into him two weeks ago. And then we went out. And he started talking about how he didn't like cats, and that was it. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, talking I was, about? I was bored. He, he, didn't, he didn't open the car door, and I don't know, something weird. Yeah. I just don't know. I didn't know why I don't like him. You know, I mean, they, they can go at 19. They can go from this dude was in my social studies class. I was checking him out all semester. He finally asked me out. I was on cloud nine to, like, feh. <laughs> in three days. Yeah. yeah. And when you say... What did the guy do? Did he take a swing at you? Did you get drunk? Did, uh, did, was he, did you find out he was a racist? Like, no, I went into his house and it just had that smell. It wasn't bad. They had a weird carpet. <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> now he gives me the creeps. Yeah. I had sex with him. I'm sorry I did it. Yeah, guys, that's what you're in for. I say that's why I only date women in their 30s or in their early, early teens. <laughs> before the ruin, huh? Yeah, before the ruin, yeah. Okay. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. Aloha. This is Don Ho, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Corolla and Dr. Drew. Mahalo. Uh, there's an islander that's uh, no stranger to the herb. Hey, it's Love Line. I'm Adam Corolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. We just uh, one eight hundred L V E one nine one. Drew and I just really had a real, real soul letting out in the in bathroom. An epiphany. <laughs> yeah. really. I don't know if it's going to ring true for everybody. Yeah. But for me and Drew, oh yeah, we just carried on that conversation we left off with with the uh, nineteen year old girls, the twenty year old girls, the eighteen year old girls, and when you're eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and you're dating them, how bad it is for you <laughs> as a male. Yes. Oh yeah. How you have almost no vote, no say, and you just... And you know, the other thing is, they're not usually that into sex at 18 or 19 either. And they're into it, you know, with somebody... With the the, Sting. The, yeah, with Bono. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not your ass. Not you. 19-year-old chicks don't like 19-year-old guys much at all. And... If you're a 19 year old guy who's dating a 19 year old chick, uh, it's 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 like spinning plates. You got to keep moving. But well, tell me your analogy of the, the king. Yeah, Drew. <laughs> this this <laughs> spoke uh, rather this loudly. Rung true to Drew. I I said, I remember so many cute girls when I was 20, 21, who were 19 or 20, who I went out with, who I could tell were not 
much into me, but they they went along for the ride anyway, and I, I likened it to the uh, king, and I was like the court jester, and I was, you know, juggling spinning and plates. spinning plates and doing a little dance and uh, had bells on my hat, and I saw them sort of sitting in the throne, and they were, they, they seemed mildly amused for, for a short period of time, but then I saw them sort of yawn and lean back, and <laughs> they never said it, but... Uh, the queen grows weary, I think, is what, queen grew is what weary, would have come out of And then you speed up the plates and get yeah, everything yeah, going I, I, again. I hustle a little and now, now, she's in, now she's a little aggravated with it. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> she's a little frustrated. Yes. It's like, off new jester, it, next off, jester. Off with his head. Bring them on that leads, leads a rock band, please. Yes, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just bad times when you're a 20-year-old guy. It really is. All right. If we're just 20, it'd be all right. This starts around 13. Yeah. Ron? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, what's happening? Was an update? No, you're uh, 24. Yeah. Yeah, I called you guys a few weeks ago. I don't know if you remember. I'm the EMT with the grandmother I and the granddaughter. Yeah, the, yeah. the hot granddaughter. I just wanted to let you guys know, man. If it wasn't for your show, I would not be dating her right now. We were having such a great relationship. Her grandfather surprised us and had a trip for us for four nights and five days to the Bahamas because they're so, like, they're so happy we're going out. Really? Oh, my God. Anderson I, doesn't believe you now. What? I'm, Where in the Bahamas you go? Wait, wait, I mean, I'm sorry. Have, have you gone to the Bahamas yet? No, we're going in May. All right. The Grand Bahama Islands, uh, Viva Fortuna. <laughs> All expense paid the whole nine yards. That is beautiful. I couldn't believe it. Like, they surprised me the other day. Yes. About it. Like, I, they're so happy because, like, you know, they, I guess all the guys she went out with, can't wait for saying this, but I guess they're scumbags or something like that. And, like, they finally, I guess she, they figured out I'm a nice guy or whatever for the work I do. Is well, she raised by the grandparents? What'd you say? Is she living with the grandparents? Yeah, she lives with the grandparents. Where, where, unfortunately, where, her mom and dad were divorced and it was, like, a really messy situation and things like that. Careful, and, uh, careful, Rod. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't really have contact with them anymore. Yeah, all right. It's just, maybe a little blowout on the island, but... <laughs> Well, kill a fun for those few days. Have a, a good times, buddy. Ron, uh, his connection was a little bad. He called it, meh, three, four weeks ago. Told us he was interested in this uh, chick who was a uh, he was a granddaughter, basically, sort of a some woman he worked on or worked with. That's an ambulance attendant. EMT, EMT. yeah. And uh, then he asked her out because of the show. Oh, she asked him out. She gave him a flower. She, she heard this. She heard yeah, the show. Yeah. And now they're going to uh, Bermuda or somewhere. God, God, Bahamas. God bless you. Michael? Hello? You're 24. What's up? Oh, nothing much. I got a question for Dr. Drew. Mm-hmm. Um, I had went to a strip club probably, mm, probably a couple of days ago. And when I was getting a lap dance, the stripper was pretty rough when she was on my lap. Uh huh. That's uh, usually extra. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe this is uh, your friend Minka. What's her name? Minka. She's kind of rough, isn't she? Yeah. And when she was, I didn't even notice until I got home the next day. Um, the top of my shaft, not the head, but the the shaft, it was pretty uh, swollen. Yeah. And right now, it's it's been probably three days since I've been there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's still, it's a little swollen, but not as much. But it's pretty swollen still. Are you able to have an erection? Yeah, I can still. I can. Have, I can have an erection. All right. Yeah, don't worry. That's fine. I don't smell worry. lawsuit, though. <laughs> it's the. Uh, <laughs> I can yeah. hear that. I can hear that case being presented. Yeah, uh, Your Honor. It, oh, the, uh, the 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 people gentlemen. versus uh, thirsty McJuggos. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm okay then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I just wanted to know if. I yeah, you're fine. Done. What'd she give you? The knee, or was it oh, the crotch? Yeah. When she was on me, she was just. <laughs> Riding me like a Bronco, bro. Yeah. yeah. Well, she was into you. She doesn't do that to most guys. <laughs> yeah. she, Some, she was in love with him, in fact. There's something about you. Something mm, about the uh, short, uh, portly guy she likes. Number one. <laughs> Number one. Yeah. You know what I love about that Minka? What? Everything. No, I'll tell you what. She's the uh, number one Asian big boob queen. Uh-huh. Number one Asian big boob queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor thing. <laughs> Now, there was some controversy. I thought she was uh, number three for a while, but as it, uh, as it turns out, she has the crown. Yeah. Who is number one? Minka's number one. That's who's number one. <laughs> Come on, hit it again, Anderson. Come on. I, I, it never gets old. Number one. <laughs> number one, Asian big book queen. <laughs> Don't play tennis no more. <laughs> uh, uh. 
Are there other drops of Minka? I, I swear to Christ. I'd like to make some sort of virtual Minka doll. <laughs> just a uh, big, uh, just, just. Just some box I could climb into, and um, oh yeah, you know we we take all these sound drops and we just create a virtual Minka. I I uh, I can't get enough for her. I, I really can't. And uh, hey, Drew, yeah, she's not interested in money. You know that? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't need money. You don't have to pay me. Minka don't need money. You'll pay now. <laughs> You'll pay. <laughs> Why, Minka? You're not into money. What she want me to put in gas tank? Compliment. All right. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. Love Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. Yeah. That's rock. I like that. American Hi-Fi. Yeah. Bring me back to my old days, you know? Thin Lizzy. Sure. Humble Pie. Kids can identify with that. Yeah, I could play some air drum to that. All right, let's uh, hop back to the phones. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Heather? Hello, how are you, Adam? Good, you're 23. What's going on? Um, I actually had an embarrassing situation happen. I went to my doctor to get a normal a gynecological exam. Mm-hmm. And when I went to him, um, I was expecting my female doctor was a male doctor. And he went ahead and did the pelvic exam. But at the same time, he informed me he was going to put a finger in both ends at the same time to check for something. Right, that, that's a normal part of the pelvic and, exam. And when he did that afterward, I, I felt uncomfortable because I didn't realize that at the same time they would put a finger in one end and then the that, other. That you do it, you put the third finger in the anus and the second finger in the vagina and you feel the septum between the two because there can be tumors there. And that's, and that's, that's part of the pelvic exam. Nice. Did he... So normal the embarrassing thing is i told my boyfriend and he told his friends and they called it six packing so yeah. now i have this nickname that i got six packed by my doctor uh-huh. and it's totally I humiliating like, yeah eh, i understand that well I, uh, i'm surprised is that your first pelvic exam no i've had them since i was younger is it's this just, was this one by an internist or a family practitioner uh, an OBGYN. he was an, but he was an OBGYN for sure yeah and a urologist Hey, how much, uh, how, how long a heads up did he give you? None. Uh, he just said, uh, it went right in. Get ready, here it comes. Yeah, and I didn't expect it to go on the other end. I thought it was just going in. I'm right. surprised it's the first time you've had that because that's a normal, that's a thorough exam. That's oh, really? what normally should be done. Yeah. See, I've had them do it, but they do it one at a time. I do that. No, no extra charge. By the way, I, I throw in the six pack mode. Well, the dual, the dual action is, is a more accurate way to check that area. So. Seriously? Yes. Did, now, uh, did he use some lubrication? No, no, a yes. little. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, come on. Let me tell you something about the uh, finger in my rectum. <coughs> I need a good. Uh, I need a good uh, week to ten days notice on that. Did one. I? Did I have to do that to you? No, that's not the you, kind you, of. You asked me to though. Uh, I was seeing if you loved me. Uh. I, I have never had a finger in the uh, rectum, by the way. Uh. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm sure it's coming soon. But my thing is, is I need, I would really need a good heads up on that one. Well, I need you to call, I'm call my assistant and schedule that I, I, one. I, I couldn't get it that, while I was up there. I'm genuinely surprised that Heather's never had that before. You know what I'm saying? I would want, there'd be some, uh, there'd be some things I need to do physically and emotionally to prepare. First off, spiritually too. Uh, I'd give myself a good evacuation mm-hmm. before I went over there. Sure, you would. <laughs> I would. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'd get a good. I'd get a bottle brush up in there if I some thought someone was putting their finger in. Before you'd be clams and pasta vasul, you'd be like. I'd take a nice shower. I'd I'd work. You'd I'd be probably fueling up. Squirt a uh, squirt a little uh, little old spice down there. Something something just to make the experience a more pleasant one all the way around. Kelly, hi. You're 19. What's up? Yes, I am. I want to say one thing. You're completely wrong about beautiful 19 year old girls. By the way. Mm, no. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> why? What's your deal? You got a boyfriend? You're madly in love with him? No, I always have a boyfriend. Um, but that's my problem. You always have a boyfriend? Uh-huh. All right. There's a lot of people like that who are afraid to be alone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I try to be alone, but when, I get a, when I'm alone, I'm really I'm not quite depressed, but I'm just not happy. Mm-hmm. So how long have you been with the current guy? 
Um, about a week. About a week. And about a week and a half. What happened to the last guy? Um, it, it was... <gasps> Things just didn't work out. Yeah, you grew weary. Yeah, the the king, the queen grew weary. Sat back, thumbs down. Yeah, whatever. Right. I mean, um, who, who broke up with who? It was pretty much mutual. Right. You you broke up with him, and he agreed to stay away. Well, we decided to slow down, and I started seeing other people. And <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. What? Why you? Yeah. You're doing a great job of defending all the uh, beautiful 19 year old women out there. Well, no, it has to be the right guy though. By behaving it's the right guy, then it's different. Yeah, we said if it's staying or or uh, sure, uh, you know. Bono, sure. Because I've been the perfect woman before. I see. Just mm -hmm. the wrong guys. I have no. What idea. does that mean? I don't know. All right, so you're with this guy. It's been a week and a half. Right. You told the other poor slob you got to slow down. Immediately start dating somebody else. Right. No, it was a mutual slowdown. No. Right, but he didn't. He, he, you were dating somebody before he was. Of course. Uh, I know, because that's what you can do. This is very painful for guys. Well, he could do it too. No. They, on paper, he can. Yeah, he would if he could. <laughs> but he just can't. He, how old was he? Uh, he just turned 25. Yeah. But he didn't have a whole lot going on in his life. Um, not particularly. No. That's why I moved on to the next That's guy. right. And that's why he hasn't moved on yet. And, and by the way, we were talking about being 19, trying to date other 19-year-olds. Oh, well you, then. You won't even get into that league. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, you wouldn't dip down to that. Yeah. No. Guy with a bunch of roommates and, and uh, yeah. living at home, borrowing his dad's car. Oh, no. No, no way. way. Yeah. You're, you're doing a good job of illustrating your point, Kelly. <laughs> All right. So now you're with a guy. It's been a week and a half. Uh huh. And uh, what's the deal? I don't know. Things are fine now. What's the question? But my question is, how come? Well, actually, not really. How come? But what can I do? I don't. Know, I'm really uncomfortable with the fact that I can't be by myself. I've tried it, and well, wh where do you think happy. that's where do you think that's coming from? Um, probably family. What, what's the deal with your family? Um, my mom died when I was 11. Okay. Well, um, of what? Um, just complications. Of what? Uh, she was a quadriplegic. She got pneumonia. She ran out of what, what, what did she get the quadriplegia from? A uh, car accident when she was 18. Wow, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So and she, how old was she when she had you? Uh, 30. How interesting. Wow. Yeah, she was a C5 quadriplegic. Wow. She hung out for a while. Yeah. And then my dad's a workaholic. Um, <coughs> I don't know, it probably stems from that. Okay. All right. Well, you know what's going on. Boy, and uh, you must have gotten used to being a caretaker. Yeah, I have a little sister. Oh, yeah, but how about mom, dealing with mom? Um, no. <laughs> she was a very, very independent woman, and she had people come get her ready in the morning and put her to bed at night. And That's incredible. What a great story, though. Was she an inspiration to you, or was it... Was it uh, oh, yeah. Ass. She was an incredible woman. She was a pain in the butt, but she was an incredible woman. <laughs> well, what was she a pain in the butt? It must be hard to feel guilty, you know, thinking, she, oh, God, my mom's such a pain in the ass, and she just can't move her arms or legs. I'd, well, get, I'd get over that pretty fast. She was just very stubborn, and we had nannies when I was little, and we went through probably about 15 of them, because none of them could stand to be around her, but... Right. How did you make... Time, uh, did, a, who's your dad supported things? Yeah, workaholic. No, she... Work too. That's why we had nannies. What you do for a living? A lawyer. Ooh. Dad's wow. a lawyer too. Uh oh. Look out. Grandpa's a lawyer too. Oh man, L a long line of a holes. That's got to oh, be rough. Okay. Yeah, but you know what? You... And I work for a lawyer. Oh. You know, here's one thing you got to admit with most lawyers. Not all, but most. They all think they're smarter than you are, and they're probably right most of the time or half the time. But they, you ever, you, I have a few friends that are lawyers, and you'll start talking to them about, like, where to eat lunch. And next thing you know, it's like, uh, they yeah. might as well put a powdered wig on. These guys are making a case. It, 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 it always bothers me. The expert on everything. Yeah. Yeah, Drew, you hate lawyers. That's hate what lawyers. I love about you. Yes, you do. Everything. You hate lawyers. I like that. <laughs> I like that. No, but, you know, when you see these, uh, you know, Johnny Cochran types or maybe even uh, F. Lee Bailey or half these guys, they're always just uh, self-important, righteous sort of, um, I would call them pompous asses. I don't pull that one out too much, but a lot of a lot of lawyers are very uh, you know, sort of judgmental asses, wouldn't you say? Maybe it just it comes from, mm, 
getting a lot of money and being in a position where you sort of affect uh, the outcome of people's lives and things like that, it's just kind of an a-hole job. There's a few of them out there. It's not that being a lawyer makes you an a-hole. It attracts a-holes. They're also they're trained to be very aggressive. Trained to be a holes. And, and, there and you when go. you're aggressive, people don't want you around. All right. So she's got a boy. It's been a week and a half. Let's see where it goes. And if it doesn't work out, which I bet it won't, let's see about being on your own for a little while. I mean, you know what you're doing. Just uh, stay with it. Keep thinking about it. Amber? Yes. And she made every point I we, we ever made about made that. Made better than we did. 19 year old girls being a handful to date. Go ahead, Amber. Well, um, I am seven months pregnant, and my mom just kind of won't accept the fact that I got pregnant, and she doesn't talk to me, or when she does, she gets really upset and, like, ignores me. Where do you live? In Utah. Do you live near her? I live with her. Oh, bad times. Yeah, because my... She works too much. My parents are divorced, so I have to help take care of my brothers and sisters. Mm. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers and two sisters. What was your plan with the pregnancy? Well, we were going to be getting married in December. And what happened to him? Is he gone now? Yeah. Um, sometime in September, he started a new job, and then he kind of met up with one of his old friends from high school, and he started drinking, started smoking, and started to get in a lot of fights and I just told them I wasn't going to put up with it and then about three weeks after that I found out that I was pregnant and I called him up and he told them and he pretty much said that he didn't believe me and took off basically mm, boy you can have him take a look he sent him a picture how you're looking now well he has he has a financial responsibility for this child certainly. What, yeah what about, what well about? he's in a coma right now Still, he has a finan... Really? Yeah. What happened? You sound pretty busted up about it. Oh, I'm just terrified. Ter I'm just still so bad about it. No. But he got in a fight with what? his ex-wife's brother. Mm-hmm. And uh, he put him in a coma because him and, like, I guess a couple of his friends really beat him up. And so how I know he's in, like, Colorado or Arizona, and he's in a coma, but that's all I Colorado, know. Arizona... Portland, uh, somewhere. So I know he's somewhere, and he's in a yeah. He's somewhere he's and somewhere. in a coma. Yeah. Hey, yeah. You don't seem to care that much. No, I think he could die for all I care. Oh, okay. Good times. What Good about times. giving this child up for adoption? No. Oh. That's what I am trying to do. But my mom. Good for you. God bless you. Yeah. I mean, you got four I, other kids to take care of. There. You really want to? Well, add I just. I know that my financial situation isn't stable enough that I'd be able to take oh, care Amber, of it. Amber, there's tons of people that want kids, please. That's just, right. Just for call an adoption service. I guarantee you that somebody will be... Really yeah, I'm, I'm working with... You could have an open adoption, choose the parents. There's a lot of power. Yeah, there's yeah. even a, a program where you can trade them for RVs and custom vans now. Oh, do you know that? She's in. I would not do it for money. That's not the well, right Well, that's, way that's why they offer that. the RV. Well... Anything material, I would not do it for. I see. I, I think it's great that you're thinking about that. I think you ought to be. You're, I think it's a hero's. Really, I think you ought to okay. have a great deal of support for this. I thought you were going to finish. But <laughs> no. Hey, Amber. Uh huh. How uh, your brothers and sisters are all younger? Yeah. And your dad's nowhere to be found. Well, he is, but uh, we've uh, gone after him quite a few times, and this guy really hasn't done anything. He's twenty six thousand dollars behind. I see. Nice. He's in a coma in either Montana or Georgia right no. now. I'm not sure. What? All right, hey Amber. Uh huh. Now here, here, you know I'm a genius, right? Oh, okay. Oh. Well, that was a ringing endorsement. Uh, you you come from white trash, yes, and. <laughs> You are going to continue that, that rich, rich heritage of white trashdom by having a child out of wedlock with an abusive a-hole guy who's out of the picture. Or you can sort of break the chain now, uh, give the child up for adoption, do the courageous and noble thing. Try to help raise the kids that are coming up. Just try to help and educate your uh, younger brothers and sisters so they don't get into this predicament. Get out of the house, get some education, get a job, get married in a few years, start a family in a stable environment, 
You can really do all that. Yeah, I'm going to school, and I ha I'm a self-employed. Okay, right. but you won't be able to do it all when you have this kid. That's well, yeah, when it gets I know that. That's derailed. why I'm placing it up for adoption. Don't, Amber, God bless like you. That. Yes, God and, bless and you, you do. You give that child up for adoption. You don't In listen fact, to your mom. Your mom, Lauren, you, your mom's a, a big thinker. That's that's clear. Take take her number. Let's check in with her again in two or three weeks. See what's going on with the adoption. That's right. Yeah, listen to mom. Her plans work like a charm. Yeah. She can't raise her five kids. Five. Yeah, it's always funny when uh, they really get the sort of novelty number of kids and can't raise one. It's like, well, I can't really raise one, but if I take, if I get five, they can start turning in on themselves and raising themselves, can't they? That's the drill. Maybe we'll start uh, some kind of uh, band like the Cow Sills or the <laughs> King Family or something like that. We'll take it on the road. We'll make some money. Dave? Yeah. You're 26. Yeah, I am. What's up? Hey, I... I haven't had a lot of sex or anything like that, but whenever I do, I can't ever finish. I I can't come. How come? I don't know. Are you wearing a condom? Well, I used to always wear condoms, and then I blamed it on that, but one time I had one partner. I'd known her for a long time and everything. We didn't. I didn't have one, and I still didn't finish. Are you on medication? No. Hmm. Have you ever had a long-term girlfriend? No. That's what you need. Can you masturbate to orgasm? Huh? Yeah. A lot. A lot. Yes. Maybe too, maybe too much. I'm maybe good at that myself. Give yourself a couple day break when you, if you know you're going to have a encounter. No, no, he's never had a break in chick. All right, he's never worked this stuff out with a woman. You understand that concept, Dave? Yeah. You need to get yourself a girlfriend, and you need to get that girlfriend that you fart in front of, that you walk around naked in front of, that you do it in every room in the house with. Do you know what I mean? So you're saying it's like a comfort thing, then? I, I I I am saying I'm trying to um, I'm trying to liken it to something. I, I was talking to somebody uh, today at uh, the Man Show about hiring and firing people and that kind of thing. And if you hire an employee and you keep them for a week and you fire them, and then you hire somebody else and you keep them for a week and you fire them, you never make any money. You never learn anything. Just when they're getting trained, just when they're getting settled in, they leave. Right. And businesses lose money that way. Got it. You got to get with somebody. You got to work it out. Yeah. You, one night stands, one night stands, one night stands. You'll never work it out that way. Find that one person. Look at it as a sort of a um, sexual uh, catcher's mitt that you break in. Okay. And hang on to for years to come. Okay. Okay, 19. Call her goes by K. Oh, hi. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Okay. Um, my question is. Um, well, me and my boyfriend have been together for about two years, and we're sexually active. I'm mean, very active. Mm -hmm. I have sex all the time. Yeah. But um, when we, we'll go for a period of time, but afterwards, if I want to go again, he can't seem to get it up after he comes the first time. He, he can never get it up twice. How, long, how I, much time do you give him between uh, I, it, encounters? It takes him, it, it'll take a, a long time before he can get it up again. What, how much time is that? Uh, it could take hours. Hours. Yeah, and how often are you guys having sex? Uh, all I mean, at least five times, six times a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not enough for you. Well, no. I no. I mean, how long does it? How long does it last when you're having sex? We go for probably like thirty-five minutes. Mm-hmm. Is she giving you the oral sex? Oh yeah, definitely. No, the sex is awesome, and I'm not complaining. I'm just no. I'm wondering, because, I mean, there's been a few times where I'd like to go again. And mm -hmm. D do you get an orgasm? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Definitely. Yeah. No, I've never had better sex. I mean, it's it's awesome. Good times. How old is he? He's he's going to be 22. How old? 22. I see. Is he really uh, older than that, maybe? I'm sorry? How old is he? Is he really 22? Yeah. Okay. It's funny. It's Sometimes people it. answer questions on the show like they're lying. Yeah, yeah. No, he's going to be 22. Going to be 22. Not 22 yet. I see. Was he 20 or now? Oh, no, 21. All right, well, listen, at the rate he's going, uh, you know, he's an, an hour refractory period would be normal. Okay. So do not expect him to be able to immediately spring to action. That's unrealistic. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's really not a whole lot you can do if no, it ain't working. No, nothing you can do about that. I I mean, it, it what you do is do less, have less sexual encounters, and maybe once a week, and then he'll be able to go several times or a lot longer. Yeah, you want to try that? 
Yeah, I, I, I figured that either it, it wasn't going to happen or he could, like, I don't know, maybe train himself to... I, no, I don't know. no, there's no training. That, that is a biological event. It's a, it's a lockout period. <laughs> and... <laughs> It's called refractory period. It's you're a locked wide out. out. Yeah, it. you're locked out. Yeah, these uh, I don't know. Few hours. I could have got it going faster than that. If you were having sex six times a week a night, six times a week rather. Yeah, twenty one. Yeah, six times a week and and every time. Or I, that, I probably wouldn't have wanted to do it, but I could have if right. uh, somebody pressed me. Right. You know, if I had a large crowd in the bedroom yeah. and they're cheering me on, sure, cheering my penis's name, that kind of thing. What 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 is your penis' name? I don't want to talk about it over there. If he hears that I was talking about him over there, it's that we, we would have heard about in the fight promotion or something, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk to Steve. Steve is nineteen years old. Steve. No, this is Jason. All right, All right. Jason. <laughs> uh, man, Adam, I want to say you're a genius, man. You're great. Thank you. That's, that's true. Thank but, you. But no, I got a question oh. about um, a sleeping disorder. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes it probably happens like three times uh, in a month or so. I'll be laying down about to go to sleep, and I won't be asleep yet, so I'm not dreaming. But uh, all of a sudden, like I'll fall into like sort of like a relaxing type sleep or whatever, but I'm still awake, and uh, my body would go paralyzed, and then like a warm feeling a run from like my head to my toe, and then once that's done, then I won't be paralyzed anymore. Well, that's basically like a hypnotic state you get into. So that or a stroke. Sometimes these can be seizure experiences. Did you have night terrors when you were a kid? Get up uh, screaming? What was that? Get up screaming in the middle of the night when you were a little kid or anything? Uh, no, not really. Did you sleep? I can remember. Did you sleepwalk? No, I've never had that. All right, and this just came on all of a sudden. No, it's um been going on probably since I was fourteen. And are you on any medication? Uh, no, not at all. Hmm. Yeah, that's something that I, I would I would think be worth looking into just to make sure it's not something uh, unexpected. But it's been there five years; it hasn't gotten worse. It's it's probably just a a normal, well, a, a not significant abnormality of your sleep. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, it's weird. How come, Drew? Yes. Riddle riddle me this. Uh, sometimes every night for a month, I'll get up and take a leak in the middle of the night, and then suddenly you don't again. It's been uh, it's been a month. Go eight hours, no wizard. Typically, that is as much as anything your prostate being irritated, excessive masturbation, that sort of thing will irritate the prostate. You. How and dare will you swell involve my and, prostate in frequent masturbation? And your this bladder will empty, empty fully, and so you have a little. It's so, easy to so order. if if your prostate gets things, irritated and swells up, two things can happen: to increase the urge to pee, and it can also decrease your ability to empty completely. Mm hmm. I'm known for my duration and thickness of stream when urinating. Yes, that, I'm, I'm pleased. Thank you. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to take ourselves... Oh! What? My ass. What? You... I was in a reclined position for a long... You, you ever lay way back in a chair and really get yourself kind of... Get your feet up, kicked up on something or whatever, and then you sit up real quick, and you get that sharp pain in your uh, coccyx? No. Never. Is it coccyx? Coccyx. There's an S in the end of it? It's C-C-Y-X. Nice. But you wouldn't call it a coccyx. Co coccyx. Thank you. How long is your penis again? We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be back after this. Yeah, everybody on the floor, this is Ice-T. You're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Nobody moves, nobody gets hurt. Yeah. I haven't seen Ice-T out here for a while. Kind of get that feeling he does that every time he does a radio liner, though, don't yeah, you? Yeah, same. Yo, everyone, get on the floor. This is Ice T. <laughs> You're listening to uh, what station we at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody on the floor. This yeah, I like to see uh, Ice T in here. It's been a while. He's a nice guy. Yeah, I just saw him uh, one of those uh, behind the music song. Very interesting. Oh boy, let's see four mm -hmm. four oh, four. Right. I don't know why I'm up there anyway. Chris. Yeah. You're 25. What's up? Oh, nothing. Just wondering how you guys doing. Good times. Good times. Oh, nothing but the best, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, uh, I like to take it in the ass, mm -hmm. but only only when my wife's giving it to me in the ass. I'm not turned on by guys. I'm not gay. Hmm. What's, the re what's the reason for that? You're gay. How does your wife do this? Well, he doesn't beat around the bush, this yeah. guy, either. He gets right to yeah, it. I've been to finishing school. No, I beat around the bush a little bit, too, but... You know, on, on occasion. He's all class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what you like, Chris. What, what's up with that? I don't know. 
There's no telling with your ass. It's, oh, it's, come on. Hey, and that, what about that guy that called that said he could uh, blow himself? Well, the lady, the lady said he could blow himself? Yep. If you could blow yourself, would you leave the house? <laughs> well, uh, eventually you'd have to uh, head out and get more paper towels or something, wouldn't you? And eventually you'd have to. Oh, I mean, they mean leave. I think they mean for long periods of time. Mm. Yeah. I just put Chris on hold because he sounded like a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. Uh. Here's the thing about blowing yourself. <laughs> Please, what is the thing about that? Well, it's like my grandpa used to say. Oh. Uh, you know, you got to stuff your head halfway up your ass to get to your dork. Right. And yeah. that's the bad part about blowing yourself. I just want to imagine your Hungarian grandfather saying that for a second. Yeah. yeah. He was a very wise man. Stuff your head. No, it wasn't Italian. It was Italian, so... It, it, it's, um... If you could get your penis off and have at it in a in a sort of comfortable fashion, yeah. you know, that's one thing. But when you really have to just bend over and essentially uh, sever your spine so you can get to your penis, depends, that's no good. Depends how long the guy's penis was. Well, that's right. true, too, yeah. yeah. Ouch. Nate? Yo. You're 22. What's up? I'm 22. All right. What's up, guys? Hey. Good times. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> I just had a, a quick question. This might sound kind of odd, but... Uh, all right, I've been having, like, wet dreams, like, I'm talking, like, three, four, sometimes five times a week. And this is something new for you? Um, it's been going on about, uh, probably about two months, maybe. Three, four, five times a week, really? I swear. You really had a week where you had a wet dream five <clears throat> nights? I swear. It's, I know, it, I feel kind of freakish. Oh, man. Anything, you want a medication? Um, I'm on Accolade for asthma, if that means anything. How long have you been on the Accolade? What's that? How long have you been on the Accolade? Um, maybe two, three years. You're, you're not on any uh, Spunkatol or Jizzeroff <laughs> or anything like that? Um, any what? <laughs> no. You're not an Accutane, are you? No. Yeah. I took it when I was like, I don't know, 16 or something oh, like that. Interesting. Hmm. Well, he did kind of find it somewhere mm -hmm. in his past. <laughs> Uh, do you know what you're dreaming about? Are you dreaming about sex? Um, a good majority of the time. Most of the time, I don't really remember. You're not mm -hmm. taking steroids or any uh, supplements? Know, just, steroids? You know, I just wake up and it's like, oh, damn it, I have to clean this stuff up. Nate, yeah. Nate uh, supplements, steroids, anything like that? Um, well... Uh oh Um, not steroids, like, you know, inject, like, try to be a WWF guy or anything, but... You know, if I like, if my asthma acts up in a bad way, which hasn't happened oh, prednisone. in a while. Prednisone. Yeah, prednisone. Right. Got it. Yeah. Well, maybe that's it. No, prednisone shouldn't do that. Well, he. <laughs> I mean, five times a week sounds like a lot because is, is he not masturbating? Well, here's the. Well, who's got time? He's leaking all night. Well, maybe if he started doing that, yeah, on a maintenance plan. Nate. Yo. Just like uh, the advice we would give to someone who wet their bed is to make sure they evacuate their bladder before they go to bed. Can you evacuate your balls before you go to bed? Oh, I'm sure I could. You see, yeah. Like, I'm, like I was saying, it's just I've had a girlfriend I've been pretty active with All right, for like but a couple months. Here's the point. E Yo. If either you whack yourself off or God does it for you in your sleep. Now, what, well, I guess God's a nice guy. Yeah, do you want the Lord busy with, with your uh, sack? Or do you, um, you want them out really saving starving children? What's that? So it's that the, it's this new relationship got you all stirred up? Is that the deal? I don't know. It's just it I sounds like it. Uh, how, uh, maybe that is what it is. I how, mean, it is a very good relationship. How long do you last when you're with her? I last forever. Oh really? Yeah, I don't. See, that's a, another problem is I don't get off from it. Oh. And like she thinks that I'm not satisfying her, and it's or uh, pardon me that uh, she's not satisfying me. Here's the problem. Yeah, and, you know... Oh, it okay. It makes her feel inadequate. Okay, well, say. Nate, if you're having sex with somebody for a long period of time, you never reach orgasm, and then you go to bed that night... Uh -huh. Your body's you, got to rid itself or something. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I can just see it now. It's like, she's in the shower, he's watching a rerun of the A-Team, his balls are, like, going, what's up? What is up with this? Like, dum -dum, dum -dum. His, his penis is like, shh, shh, relax, relax, I got a plan. What, 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 what? What do you mean? What, he's not looking. He's riding her like a mechanical bull for an hour and a half. I got nothing. What you, hey, balls, chill out. I know what I'm doing. You'll see. We'll have our day. Give it about an hour. Or night. 
<laughs> the case may be. Right. Then he falls asleep. It's like, hey, balls? Yeah. Let's go. Everyone out. Move. 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 That's, that's what happened. It's bizarre, though, that he's found this uh, mis- you know, like like uh, difficult to understand. Did you hear him? He's like, oh, re- what? What? Yeah. Really? Let's see. That's sort of weird. Just kind of... Yeah, Nate? Know, it's just weird. I- yeah, you're not... You uh, you don't know about a lot, a lot about life or math or anything like that, do you? Uh, math's a negative. I'm not too hot with math. Shocking. That means anything. Shocking. Well, there's just some easy uh, sack math we can do here, which is you're humping all night and not having an orgasm, and then you go to bed without having one, and then you have one in your sleep. Now, if you'd gotten off with your girlfriend an hour earlier... You wouldn't be having it. You wouldn't be having it. The question is, why are you nervous around your girlfriend? Um, In what sense? Uh. Like, how? what do you mean by nervous, like... Well, you just use your imagination. Drew, have you ever really had to define being nervous? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm, okay, well, she, like I said, she is kind of new, and I mean, I really like her a okay. lot. Okay, why don't you beat yourself off before you go to bed? Are you religious? I don't, hell no. What is wrong with you, son? I, good question, that's why I'm calling, man. Well, listen, you're, okay, but you're 20, now all the other 22-year-old guys are listening, you're like driving off the road right now, I mean, <laughs> you're 22 years old, you have a long sexual encounter with a young woman, you don't reach orgasm, then that woman goes home, or you go home? And it happens in my... And, and you don't beat yourself before you go to bed? No. Uh, <laughs> that that to me is like uh, you may, you may have a tumor or something. I mean that is I don't even know what planet you're from. You're from Mork or Orc? Where was Mork from? Orc? I don't know. <laughs> Good question. All right, Nate. Yo, you if you do not you whack yourself off before you go to bed every night. Do you understand? Is that you want me to do that? Yes, yes. For well, me, why should I whack it off when I do it in my sleep? All right. Well, then spread a. Uh, sp- Spread a gym shirt down or something so you don't ruin everything. Dude, you beat off? What, what a strange uh, wiring. Yeah. I'm I mean, sorry. I know, I know it offends you. I know. I'm, I'm just picturing Nate, like, around the stove, like, putting his hand over the flame and then burning it and pulling it back and looking curious for a minute and then putting his hand back over the flame again. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I mean, don't uh, reptiles have enough wiring to figure this one out? You calling in why you're having a wet dream? Yeah. And, and then a little incensed that you should suggest he masturbate. Like, what? Uh, what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nate, you either have it with her or you have it at your own hands, literally, before you but go to why? bed. But why? God does right, it for well, me. All right. Well, then don't do it. I wouldn't. I don't know. Five nights a week. What's he need a girlfriend for when he's got a five nights, five nights a week worth of wet dream? See, I think where your head goes, like, look what he's missing. Right? What do you mean? All those possible masturbatory experiences. Oh, yeah. I think he's missing all that. He doesn't yeah. really even remember having orgasm in his sleep. Yeah. Adam, I know, I know that's tough for you to take. Yeah, I'm disgusted with uh, the two of you. So you, you, your penis and your testicles. Lola? Yeah. You're 21? Yes. What's up? Um, well, I went home with somebody the other night, and um, that's kind of out of character for me. And um, I kind of let loose with this guy because, um, you know, he, obviously he was a stranger um, with, like, the spanking and, like, the hair pulling and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, I felt guilty about it, but now um, we got along really well and, like, he made a big deal out of, like, wanting to get my number and stuff. And <laughs> I feel even more guilty now because he hasn't called. Oh. How, so, how long ago was it that this happened? Um, like, about a week ago. Nope. Oh. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Was it a week? Where, where, where'd you meet him? Um, I met him at a bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Spanking and hair pulling, huh? Yeah. You guys, were you a little drunk? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, good times. Yeah. And uh, how old is this guy? Um, he's twenty six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you guys, uh, you got into a little uh, rough trade, as Drew calls it. I don't yeah. know what that means. I just feel like. I'm totally bad, like, you know, well, I was raised Catholic, so obviously. Right. But um, I feel kinky or something, like, Mm -hmm. he rejected me because I'm too kinky. Yeah. Now, do you you like the guy, though? Yeah. Well, you like him more now that he hasn't called, though, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, God. (laughs) I mean, when you drove home, 
when you drove home, and, yeah. and be honest, and I don't even know if you can answer this, but see if you can. Okay. If he had called you the following morning, uh huh, with a little air of desperation. Oh, I would have hated that. Uh, yeah, like, uh, watch, uh, I'll be him. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Lola. Yeah. Hi, it's uh, Brad from uh, last night. Cute. I, I, I can't stop thinking about you. Uh huh. I, I just keep. I remember I met you over at Q's. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stop thinking about you. I can't stop. I want to get together. Can we uh -huh. get together tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. But if you if you ran into him, yeah. Two weeks from now, at some mm -hmm. bar, you'd be like so hot for him, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, but all, why do you... all based on him not calling? Yeah, I just that's don't great. But you I guys don't are geniuses. Do you hear me? You don't understand what? Why does he, like, why do guys make such a big deal out of wanting to get your number and then they don't call? Well, after he just got done uh, banging the bejesus out of you and he's got a mouthful of your hair, he's got to say something. He's yeah, not going like, to say, yeah. Have, he's not going to say, have a, have a nice ride home, baby. I'll see you in the next life. Yeah. He's going to go, oh, hey, that was great. Give me your number. Yeah. He could have could have lost it. No. No, he no. put it in his phone book. He made sure that it was in his phone book. There and, and there it, sometimes there's fires. Listen, he still, he'll still could call. Really? It's only been a week, right? No. Yeah. What a call if he was into you. Yeah, well, but, but he'll call for a little well, service. But what if he's good? Huh? He's smart. He's smart. Yeah. He hasn't been drunk yet, probably. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He'll call you when he's loaded. Mm -hmm. The phone is going to ring at like one forty-five on a Tuesday, a week and a half from now. Yeah. And it's going to be like. I said, <laughs> stinking whore. You know, I got a big discussion with Mars Venus Group today about why guys wait three or four days before they call again. Yeah. I'll and tell it, you why. Because if you call the next day, you're screwed. You're screwed to call the next day. But listen, usually you go out Friday or Saturday. Yeah. And three or four days later, you're starting to plan again for the weekend. So yeah. You're calling Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. No, this guy ain't calling. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if he gets good and liquored up, but I, I doubt it. Did I take it personally? Well, listen, you, you live by the sword and you die by the sword. <laughs> I can't help it, but I'm happy this guy isn't called. Because I know you would have crapped on him if he called the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to think about that. And don't yeah. worry about it. Eh, listen, you, you had a one-night stand. Everyone does that. It's all I right. I didn't feel guilty. No, you got it out of your system. Okay. You can check it off and move on with life. All right. All right, baby. Good times. Okay. It's no big deal. <laughs> Everyone's done it. All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. Yeah. She really would have hated the guy if he called the next morning. That's what I love. But he would have called if he was really into her. He would have called a couple days. He would have wanted to call the next day or yeah. the day after that. But he would have sat on it for a little while. But if he's looking for a service agreement, he would be calling every week or two. Yeah. He may also have a woman. Oh, yeah. You see that? Yeah. If you ain't getting that drunk service call within yeah. the first couple of weeks, there's someone else around. Yeah. Someone has found a number. Somebody has come home. Someone's back in town. All right. We'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 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 Yeah. That's rock and roll, everybody. Didn't I say that in the last song, too? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I know what the kids want to hear, Drew. That's why I'm man in the helm. I'm Adam Carolla. It's Dr. Drew. Oh. oh. Yes, he does. He knows how to please in every detail. You go into some sort of fugue state when they play this. <laughs> he can do more than you'd ever imagine. And do it with style. He does it with me. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> Drew, sing it. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> I tell you, they they should win. I don't know what you get for scoring porn movies. Is it is like a, a Tony or Baloney or Spunky or whatever, whatever whatever gift they get? They should really the the award should be given to whoever scored Taboo too. Right. I'm so Pavlovian too. He just fires a song if I you, go you right into it. it. Yeah, it was a fugue. A fugue state. <laughs> <laughs> what is that like before coma? It's just a, 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 a your your altered state. You're just yeah. away when you speak in tongues. Yes, exactly. John. Yeah. You're 19. Running away. I am running. 19. Fugue means what? To run. Ah. To like run away. All right. Like a fugitive. <laughs> okay. What's up there, John? I'm 19. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. 
I weigh I weigh about two hundred pounds now. Mm-hmm. So when I was about fifteen, sixteen, I was three hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. Big kid. Um, and I lost about sixty pounds in two months, which isn't real healthy. I wow, how'd you do that? Just didn't eat. Um, yeah, it was kind of an awkward situation. But um, hey, let me ask you a quick question, Chad. Yeah. Uh, your parents, uh-huh. you know, when they got a kid who's uh, lumbering in at three bills, and uh, he's fifteen. Yeah. Are, are they trying to cut you off at a certain point or put you on a diet or is mom watching what she's bringing home from no, the market? No, I mean, my whole family's big. I mean, no one's, like, outrageous, but, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm 6'3 right now. I was probably six foot then. Okay. I'm still 300 pounds, but I'm not, you know, I'm not looking overwhelming. What's the question? Uh, it's 300-pound 15-year-old is a, is a load. Yeah, it no, is. No, yeah, I, no I, I know. I'm just. I'm always wondering what's going on in the parents' head when the, the kid's 300 pounds at 15 is going to have a heart attack at 17. It's like <laughs> you, you're 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 making the chimichangas. Yeah. All right. So now you're uh, you're 200. I'm not, yeah, I'm about 200 pounds. I'm almost 20 years old, but I still have all this skin and all this fat that isn't going anywhere, mm. no matter what I do. The loose skin. Yeah, and then, boy, and there's still some fat there. I mean, I think. I mean. And I don't, and I, I mean, I work out, I mean, frequently and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the, frequently people lose a ton of weight and need to see a plastic surgeon, or will often see plastic surgeons and get that excess skin taken but off. But is there a way to, that, to go around that without going to a plastic surgeon? Not if it's the really excess skin. Well, all right, I'm no uh, doctor, but I still contend I'm smarter than Drew. Uh-huh. And at 19, you got a little time. Yo, I mean, yeah. your, your, body, your, body very your body was stretched out for a good long time, and it's recently I- in its new shape. Yeah. And this ain't going to take six or eight weeks. No, I understand. I mean, th- this transformation could take a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But I-, I would bet, and I don't know if it will completely ever go away without some plastic surgery, but I will bet if you're very disciplined in your diet and you're very disciplined with your exercise mm-hmm. and you do a lot of, uh, you know, high repetition stuff and, you know, skipping rope and that kind of stuff and not, not bulky stuff and you watch your carbohydrates and all that, all that good stuff, that within uh, a year or so, a lot of this is going to go away. Could be. Could be. And then, if nothing happens by the time, let's say, you're 21 or so, then you can go to a plastic surgeon sure. and they can get rid of it. Sure. And they do this all the time. Yep. They enjoy it. Very reasonable. They use the extra skin to make uh, lampshades. Nice. Yeah, that's what Dr. Marcel was saying. Kenny? Yeah. You're 28. What's up? Uh, um, basically, me and my wife about four or five months ago started seeing a marriage counselor. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of our problems are worked out except for the fact that she has very low libido. Mm-hmm. I have very high, so that was that was probably our main topic while seeing this uh, therapist. <clears throat> I took a problem that was very small and made it very huge. Uh, the therapist called me in by myself, which I thought was odd about two days ago. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, when I went in, we, which she was basically lying in wait for me. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, we we did it. We did it. I nailed her. Really? That's bizarre. Well, it is, and, and I'm. I, you got to report this. You well, this. Oh, that, wait a minute. Wait, he reports. He reports her. He reports him. She's too good to report to tell you the truth. Well, you, you're getting yourself in some very dangerous territory, and this this person is dangerous. Yeah, I would. I would strongly urge you to call the Consumer Affairs. Make an anonymous. You can make an anonymous. How report. old is she? She's. I'd say. I don't exactly know. She's not quite forty. Do you want to? You'd like to leave your wife for her? No. Because, uh, you know, it's just... I'm, like, looking inside of my coping mechanism, and it's telling me just to bolt out of everything. And I, I don't know if I want to do that. I just... Leave both of them? Just leave. Okay. Well, let, Kenny? Yeah. Understand this. Oh. As you know, I'm a genius. Yeah, I know. Because I announce it repeatedly every night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This therapist is a is a deeply troubled person. And a dangerous person. And a dangerous person. Well, what's she gonna do? F you to death? Listen, you do <laughs> she, not want to get ruining you marriages. do not want to get hooked up with this person. This is a handful. 
Believe you me. I don't care how tantalizing she is. I don't care how pretty the picture is. This is a deeply disturbed, flawed person that you cannot spend any real time with. I'm, I'm coming to that realization, but what do I say to my wife? I don't want to see this woman no more. Uh, yes. Why? Yes. Yes. And I, I would strongly urge you to call Department of Consumer Affairs and make an anonymous report. I would. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's going to do that. She, I, she I, may need a dossier built up on her. I, I might I might call this uh, therapist and tell her uh, that it's off. And that if you get any calls from the wife or whatever, uh, you know what I mean? Unless you want the jig to be up and her license will be revoked, you better tell her to play along. He's a dangerous, dangerous person. Jesus Christ. I've been in therapy for uh, on and off probably 10 years and never, 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 didn't even get a hand job. Yeah. Not even a hand job. Sorry. Thousands uh, of dollars. Not even a hand job. She's there to try to salvage these marriages. And Damn, I am so mad at my therapist right now. I know. He's, he's a son of a bitch. I'm going to kill that guy. Well, you could, you know. I, you know, I'm not saying that I want the guy to give me a BJ, but at least offer. Well, you're supposed to ask. Give me a chance Therapy. to turn you down. Therapy. Yeah, you got to ask. He knows my. He knows I have low self esteem. No, no, you got to ask. That's part of the process. Oh, I have to ask. Yes. Him. Oh. See? Okay. Are you sure? Because I'm going to do that on Tuesday. It's part of the process, right? Saying just go right in and ask for a BJ. Mm. At least you know the therapist. Okay, okay. At least okay. they're not going to initiate. All right, I'll do it. But if I tell you, if you're if you're yanking my chain, if you're if you're gaslighting me, draw. I'm going to be mad when I see you on Wednesday. All right. All right. All right, we'll take a break. Sunday night, we're going to be talking about the morning after pill here on Love Live. We're having someone from Planned Parenthood and someone from a Light to Right group, and we're going to finally go at this topic a little bit. It's something that Adam and I feel very strongly about, and something that can, I think, significantly improve the health of young people if we uh, put the word out there about what it is and how it works in reality. So we'll be talking about that on Sunday night and Esai Morales on Monday and Poe here on Tuesday. Uh, thank you, Anderson. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Sarah and Ann, for a good week. And uh, this is Dr. Drew on behalf of Adam Carolla saying... Mahalo. Yeah, I love uh, I love my nephews. No, I'm I'm in love with him. No, I mean I really love him. I like that sex with him. You missed my point. This has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Love Line is Ann Wilkins Engel. Love Line is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.